Officer, we're joined now by Republican Congresswoman from New York, Nicole Maliataka. She serves on the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee and the House Foreign Affairs. Congresswoman, thank you for coming on today. First, I want to give you an opportunity to share your thoughts on what's happened in New York City. It's absolutely tragic. I share so much of the uh, sadness and frustration you heard from PBA President Pat Lynch last night. Um, this was preventable, and sadly, uh, enough is enough. We really need to change the laws of New York and New York City uh, to ensure that we put these bad guys behind bars. Repeatedly, we've warned about this. We've said that these dangerous bail law that the Democrats passed in, in Albany were leading to more people being released. In fact, the detectives union recently told me that nine out of 10 people found with criminal possession of a weapon are being released back onto the street. And 50% of the people that actually shoot somebody are being released back onto the street without bail because of these laws. And it just has to stop. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm begging my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, let's work together to fix our city. The mayor, uh, to his credit, has said he wants to do this. But, you know, it's been three weeks. We've already seen five Police officer shot, one now fatally, um, and I pray for police officer Mora that he makes a speedy and full recovery. Uh, but we are so sad about this death of police officer uh, Rivera. But what you're also seeing, what you're also seeing in Albany is the governor's appointed parole board releasing cop killers over and over again, over a dozen in just the last couple of years alone. And so we need to change this sentiment. We have to keep these bad guys behind bars. We can't continue to have these policies. We can't have district attorneys who say they refuse to prosecute crimes, that they're not going to, if, if you're caught with a, a, uh, a, a, you know, drugs, they're going to, selling drugs, they're going to charge you with just possession. If you if you're use, do a gunpoint robbery, they're going to charge you with petty larceny. If you murder somebody, they're not going to put you in jail, uh, life without parole. That stuff has consequences, and we're seeing those consequences play out right before our eyes. And as we're looking on our screen, the procession last night for the NYPD officers shot. Let me just quickly, before I turn to Ukraine, because I have to get to that in just a nutshell, what, where would you, you say this was preventable, what happened in New York City. Where would you begin to, to make it so that it's not going to happen again? Well, first of all, it's the messaging coming out of some of these politicians. You can't have district attorneys saying that they're not going to prosecute crimes. We also need better judges. You know, someone who shot another cop last week it potentially may be getting out on on uh, without with bail because the bail is going to be paid for because despite the pleas of a district attorney that said that they wanted to be held, this person to be held without bail. That's another change. Better judges. But the bail law in Albany is the real big one. That has to be changed because we're seeing, again, nine out of ten people, criminal possession of a weapon, being released back onto the street with no bail. So that that's the big one. Let's turn to the world stage. Obviously, tensions running at an all-time high as many worry that Russia is about to invade Ukraine. What do you believe we should be doing right now? What would you advise the administration to do? Well, look, we need to be imposing sanctions. We need to be sending uh, weapons to Ukraine so they could defend themselves. We need to be working with our allies, uh, particularly in NATO, to provide support to Ukraine. All this needs to be on the front end, not after they do the invasion. We need to prevent this invasion. And the only way we're going to do that is if we set a very strong tone uh, with Putin. It's 100 years since the Soviet Union was created. He's trying to put back the pieces. We cannot allow it. It's going to destabilize Europe. It's going to have major world implications. And remember, everyone else is watching what President Biden is doing right now. China, Iran, North Korea, all our adversaries are looking. He already made a big mistake with the botched uh, withdrawal from Afghanistan. That was noted. What a disaster that was. Uh, you're also seeing him red light, uh, green light rather, the Nord Stream pipeline. This is why we're here in this position at mm -hmm. this moment. It's because of some of the things that he's done, in including reducing our en energy independence and putting, helping buy, uh, uh, Putin fund this the invasion. That, that's what's yeah. happening right now from our president. And just in the time we have left, just 30 seconds or so, a very interesting question from my colleague Jackie Heinrich at the White House uh, this week asking the president if he, why he's waiting for Russia to make the first move. The president, of course, said that was a stupid question, but really, does it appear to you that we've missed opportunities 
that things are headed to a place where we should have acted before Putin does. Yeah, I could tell you as a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee that representatives on both sides of the aisle are saying the same thing. We need to deter this. We don't can't respond afterwards. It's going to create a lot of ramifications, and we don't want to go down that route. Look what happened in 2014 with the annexation of Crimea. That was another foreign a policy blunder by the Obama and, and, and Biden administration. They see that this is weakness again, bad foreign policy, bad negotiations. We urge the president to be proactive here and let's deter. Let's not react afterwards. We are keeping a close eye on the situation there. Representative Nicole Maliatakis, thank you for your time today.